all the people out in the YouTube land, Facebook land, inshaAllah all those whom are joining us online, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. We see all the comments, all the, the, the emojis, everything, Allah bless you, dress you. Thank you for participating, thank you for participating in everything and every platform. And we describe many times that we review everything, look through everything and so alhamdulillah always continuously praying for all those whom are participating and actively involved. And also praying for those whom are sitting in the shadows and hiding to come forward. That to let your spiritual social profile be known, participate, comment, be active. Don't, don't be a hidden person in a shadow but to be recognized so that you're under their nazar and, and that your character trying to improve and that you want the attention of heavenly servants and those whom watch through our eyes and those whom are watching directly in every interaction that this community and this media platform put out. We believe that it's under support and under their nazar. So whether it's a post, an article, a, a website, a, whatever it is that it is under their nazar and that they're watching and praying. So alhamdulillah for all those whom they're strong enough to comment and be known and to be understood, to be participating. And those whom are still hiding inshaAllah give them a strength to come forward inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, uh, how can we tap into this 70 trillion of volts of energy that Allah gave us? Hmm. That was the, the talk on the, the 90 trillion volts of energy running through the body that scientists are now admitting. And they're baffled that where's all that energy? When they know that one has 1.4 volt and 70 trillion cells, so the collective whole should have upwards of 90 trillion or whatever the calculation is, volts. Where, where is it? Until they come to the realization of what the concept of shaitan is or nefarious beings. And Allah has given to us an Ayatul Kareem that I have atta attached a nefarious jinn to every human. And that was the concept of the regulator because Allah didn't want us coming to earth and using superhuman powers because we are heavenly beings with a tremendous amount of ability that Allah granted to us, wa lakar karamna. I have honoured you, what, what karamna? It can't be accounting, it can't be because we have the ability to eat and, and drive cars, that can't be the honour Allah is talking about. But the immense power within the soul and the ability of the soul and the immense ability of movement through the world of light and, and, and all, the, all the talks, all of them collectively are yet a drop in the reality that Prophet to disclose. So that immense power, how is it to be achieved? Allah didn't want it, everybody just to come to earth and use superhuman powers. So attach the shaitan to everyone which we consider to be like a regulator. So our whole life is about how to reduce the effect of the regulator and increase and go back to the origin of our power. And that was with the understanding and the hikmah of good deeds. Is that every day I plan to think, what am I going to do for the power of my soul? And the actions that I take so that my soul will have power. When I pray, at the end I meditate and connect. Uh, when I do my zikr, meditate and connect. When I do a good deed or hand out, meditate and connect. Everything that I'm doing for my soul is then a power that takes my voltage up. And everything that I did wrong and sinned, the ones that I know, 
Then Prophet gave for us, then give sadaqah, do a good deed, go give out a hasanat, go give out food, go do something good so that it counters the bad and at the end of the night when you do your accounting, because everyone does accounting for their books and their business. Because imagine running a business in which you lose every day, uh, probably 90 days you would be bankrupt. So nobody runs their life losing every day. That you work at a job in which you can't pay any of your bills, in 90 days it would be clear to you that whatever you did brought nothing and you're losing. But pe people don't run their akhirah like their dunya. The akhirah has to be more important in which am I running positive every day or I'm running negative. If I'm running negative I'm going to be bankrupt in six months. And in the heavens you'll be bankrupt very fast because the more you go negative your character becomes negative because now you have no more positive energy. So within 60 days of 90 days of extreme negativity the negative energy will overwhelm your choices, your desires, your foods, everything about the individual until they talk bad, eat bad, think bad and begin to act extremely bad. So that's the same concept is that we have to take a hisab and accounting. Every night did my account go up, I did some sins, did I cover those sins with sadaqah, good deeds, food and istighfars and anything that I can do of a good deed for the goodness and hasanat to come and to overwhelm the negative. If I'm running positive daily then you should begin to feel a tremendous amount of energy. And that's why then they meditate and contemplate and those whom they're serious in their meditation and their connection they actually feel it. When they're good and their character is good they feel the fires is dressing them and blessing them. But if they start to do bad things they feel ashamed to make that connection. And they know that the things they did wrong they can't connect because they feel ashamed of what they're doing or what they've done. So it means this is a very real process. When they have that positive energy they're feeling it, they feel the immensity of that energy, they keep their hisab, they understand when they have to take their account back up, they understand how they have to account and, and cover the negative charges that came onto their account. So alhamdulillah this is a servant in a rijal whom takes a hisab and takes a, an understanding of their path and because they're sincere in understanding themselves you can see how they're gaining sincerity with Allah They're not heedless, they're not op opening just to stand on the side of a corner that they're actually running this with all good intention. As a result they become more and more sincere because Allah wants to see can you run your own shop before he allows you to run the whole shop, right? People want to achieve sainthood or, or high degrees or high positions for what? Allah is going to allow you some sort of governance in his kingdom. But if you can't run your own kingdom and you're running it bankrupt and shaitans have overrun everything, how is going to let that servant to get involved with his kingdom? So Allah gave to us a lesser kingdom within ourselves. It has to be governed correctly and with sincerity, then Allah opens for the heavenly kingdom, inshaAllah. Now that was in Surat Al-Yusuf that we talked about, that first he had to gain the control of his own kingdom and not be overtaken by his desires. Then Allah gave the greater kingdom in which the sun and the moon were subjected and made sujood, inshaAllah. <coughs> This is a long question, Sayyidi. Long question. Long question? Yeah. <clears throat> As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as uh, This man from Zimbabwe developed a green energy which he asserts is revolutionary because it converts radio frequencies directly into clean and renewable energy. For example, to put this technology into a car making, it is the first electric car vehicle that converts radio frequencies into energy. 
In other words, his electric car does not have a recharging. Would you please explain us uh, in the world of light the benefit or like that? Benefit of that man's invention? Related to energy. Yeah, we have, we have to <laughs> call that man <laughs> what he invented or, or what his technology. And uh, again, these are, you know, internet stories. It could be true, could be. Some, some truth in it could be very truthful but the main concept is that energy is free. So what somebody does on dunya is different. So then you would Google on Nur Muhammad the articles on the pyramid. If you understood the articles on the pyramid Allah sent us down with free energy. You know why Sayyidina Musa was not allowed to leave Faraon because Musa represented lightning. He represented a knowledge of energy in which he would cast the kingdom into darkness. And Faraon was not uh, accepting of that reality that you're going to leave and cast my nation into darkness. So then the essential role of the pyramid is not based on the architecture of the chimpanzee, chimpanzee people. The monkey people whom govern the schools and tell everybody they came from a baboon and that was their ancestors is incorrect. And that's their philosophy, that's the education that they choose to keep pushing onto people. The pyramids were an ancient reality. And they had to do with the reality of energy and that energy was free and water and sun and stones and certain minerals that can collect this energy from the reaction of the sun to the water molecules. So it means this whole source of energy was free. Shaitan came because what shaitan doesn't want anything free. Shaitan came and invented for these people a system of petroleum and anything related to petroleum is satanic. And any byproduct of petroleum has shaitan's involvement in it. So it means that that whole system was shaitan and how to bring in a power <coughs> based on petroleum and how to make engines and devices based on combustion and explosion. So they want to explode something to make an energy, use that energy to use it for a car, the engine, the pistons of an automobile if anyone knows how those systems work. It's based on the explosion of energy and that's so that they could capitalize, monetize and then sell it to people. And the system of dunya is to take things and sell them to people by which you can control and own them and can and manipulate. But anything from Allah is free. And the greatest source of power is the sun. And the sun's reaction to water and the release of, of the elements and electrons from water and that these pyramids were based on specific stones. And, and granites and different stones that would capture these energies, harness the energy and then they would be able to use it, store it and then move it like a big battery system. And the whole of the pyramid and all its technology had to do with the top of the pyramid, the capstone. And that was the sort of plug and the reality of that power. So all of these realities of energy are free. And if they begin to find a heavenly and divinely inspiration they'll find that energy is free and it's harnessable and usable. And that's only at a time when they want to take away this system of oil and petroleum. Now their economy is based on petroleum, their power is based on petroleum, their wealth is based on petroleum. If somebody came and said, well we can actually make a car from water. Well that person probably wouldn't survive on this earth because you're talking about all the industries and banking and financial centers that would collapse as a result of that. Nations would collapse. 
So anything from Allah is free. As we get closer towards these days of technology, many of these free energies begin to enter into this realm and that becomes a sign of the collapse of, of a petroleum based life and that has to do with the events that are coming on to this earth inshaAllah. So alhamdulillah the most powerful energy to focus is the energy that comes to your soul. That's, that's nothing more powerful than a soul, means the amount of energy and the infinite capacity of that energy from Allah's power oceans is immense, immense. Its ability and what Allah can unlock of the reality of the soul. So that's what we should be sort of focusing, trying to harness that reality, how to make the connection with the shaykhs that are a source of free energy. Means that these teachings is like thinking about, how am I going to connect to the sun and be a, a satellite system? And how am I going to get my satellite dish to receive this energy that's coming from the heavens? And as much as you can receive it, you have to have as strong a capacity to receive and to store. So we talked before the cellular and what they call solar dishes and solar systems for your house why they didn't take off so well before is because the technology for batteries was not very good. Imagine capturing a whole bunch of energy in California and all day long you catch this energy and it just goes to nothing. You just use some of it but you can't store most of it until Tesla began to bring out his battery technologies. So then what made that whole system successful now is the battery storage. Because now that when you're collecting, you're collecting an abundant amount of power. So much so that you can begin to use it for other purposes or to other people. So imagine the same self who meditates but is filled and, and porous, means has a lot of holes. All their bad character they're meditating and now all their bad character is going out. So all day long they're trying to connect this energy and all day long all the energy is going. So their capacity to store energy is more important than their ability to meditate only. So they have to have a, a clean heart, a good practice to be vigilant over themselves. So as they're connecting they're not losing it every second. They're storing the energy and all that energy is building in within their reality. And that by their practices, their understanding and that Allah's watching everything. There's not a single thing that's not observed and that's when people just really don't understand. Even when we talk to, to loved ones still the concept that a, an angel is attached to everything. Every bite that you eat there are angels on those bites and those angels are responsible for taking Allah's blessing into that person, into their organs, into their being and into their soul. Everything is under the movement and the command of angels. Not a cell is moving without the command of an angel. So when we understand and truly have a consciousness of Allah then we understand that everything is under Allah's command and He gave that whole command to Sayyidina Muhammad Sahar lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi wa jamiya that we have subjected to you, O Muhammad whatever is on the heavens and whatever is on earth and anything between them. That's why now people when they use their phone and mobile phones, they found out, oh all these software companies know exactly who you're talking to, who you're texting and what you're doing because every app has a back window to another company that watches whatever you're doing. Well Allah knows all that. Everything in, in somebody's body is being observed. Every movement, movement of every cell is under a command and nothing can move without that command. Nothing can enter something without Allah's command. So it's the immensity 
of that governance and that power and the izzat and might of Allah When the servant becomes more attuned in their tafakkur, right? Because if they're heedless they don't understand what that means. But when Allah opens their spirituality their micro understanding becomes very intense. Means to the smallest minute movement they understood that Allah is might and majesty over it and nothing, nothing can move without a command. And that's why we, we give the example but I don't really think people understand. If you imagine a room filled with like a toy set, the electronic toy set where everything is moving electronically. But in this game the electronic movement is based on Wi-Fi, there's no wires. So this Wi-Fi is touching everything on this game and these cars are all moving, they're powered. If you turn the power off none of the cars can move because there's no power source coming to them. But the power is coming wirelessly like a Wi-Fi signal into the entire game. As a result all the cars are moving. So your logical mind knows, hey if I turn the power off of course these cars are not going to move because they have to have a power source. But when it becomes so advanced that your power source is wireless then it becomes, oh wow look at that yeah. And if we cut the power source nothing will move. Do you think that there's anything in you moving? And if Allah cut the power it has an ability to continue moving? No. Why, why would a game or a toy that you make move without power? Everything and every cell and every movement, everything in existence is moving because a power and a command is coming to it. The cell is under a command with a power, a Wi-Fi power coming and telling that cell what to do, where to move and how to move. So everything is under Allah's command. When they meditate and contemplate they begin to see, of course if the outside is like that you don't think the inside is far more complicated? And that's the immensity, immensity of this reality that nothing comes to anyone unless it's under Allah's command. Sifatullah Aziz, Allah's azimat and al-aziz that everything and nothing can stop Allah's command. Everything is under that movement. Whatever power somebody thinks they have, Allah's power is the power of that power. If Allah should turn the switch off this entire computer closes. This entire environment of a game that we live in shuts down. If the supreme power cuts every power within this game that we call life cease to exist. So this becomes more and more clear than the people who, who want to reach to the real power they're not interested in the game and who has this and who has that ability. They want to attach to the supreme power, the power in which never goes off. If we can attach to that power, reach to that power that's an eternal blessing because this game, when this game is over whatever you achieved of the power from this game it dies with you. So whatever you achieved of dunya it died with you. But whatever you achieved of Allah's power, of Allah's blessings it stays with us eternally. So that when we park the physical body Allah says, you achieved the immense power on your soul. And now your soul is radiating like a sun, like a star in the sky. So that which is eternal is our only focus and our only interest because everything else is perishing, inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, Sayyidi, I have a severe anger problem. I try to control it but I can't contain it. Is there anything I can do to prevent myself from exploding? 
You know the anger is uh, everyone's problem now, that's because of the shaitans that are overwhelming the entire system. In this, in, in this environment that we live in now the shaitans have overtaken everything and that's why all of these different things that have been forced upon people against their will, forced upon their body and, and everything. So that the shaitans can overtake people and be everywhere. As a result the wudu, the taweez and taweezes within the house are an immense source of blessings. So when we have taweezes in our car, in our homes and upon our being and upon our children and upon everything, these are an immense source of blessings. And these are a protection for us and then we meditate, we contemplate, we make our salah, we make our wudu, we make our zikr, we make our salawats. All of these are again energy. The more energy we have the more we're pushing away negativity. And the negativity is very real. So we describe many times we would go younger when the kids were younger they would want to walk on a trail. And there was a trail on this mountain that was very crazy sort of you look down and there's a cliff of trees and I would never go near that. And they said, why you don't go near that? Why would you just walk on the edge of that? I say, you crazy? Being who I am I know what shaitan wants to push me off. You come right next to me and try to push me. He doesn't care if you manifest or he doesn't manifest. So I would never put myself in a position to be pushed by shaitan. So as we're walking then shaitan pushed the mountain instead of me and push the entire mountain to come so that it would look like it's coming down on me and then make me to fall off the edge. But he plans, Allah plans better and something happened and it stopped before it could push me. So it means our life is very real. Anyone who's heedless of shaitan has already lost. That's why we have our taweezes so that shaitan doesn't come and push our children off a mountain or off something else, that this battle is real. Shaitan wants to push all the people off, especially those whom he believes has an importance in the future. And that's why then this is a concept of being mahfuz and guarded. When Allah wants to guard the servant He sends them to a system, right? So it's you achieve in dunya certain wealth all of a sudden you're sent into a system of protection. Oh with this wealth you have you need now bodyguards, you need a special bulletproof car because now everybody want to kill you for the money that you have. You need this, you need that. So dunya has all of these things because you know if that person gets on a plane maybe they're gonna hijack him and steal his children. So you don't think that Allah has the same system for people whom are inspired and aspiring to elevate and to achieve a higher rank of energy? And you don't think shaitan is also out to destroy them, get them out of the game, to push aside their ability? And that's why then Allah sends them to a system, oh you're going to now go on this spiritual path then you should be with these people. They're going to outfit you with everything that you're supposed to have on this spiritual path. So your car becoming bulletproof is a taweez, so that your taweezes are on the car so that nefarious and bad energies are not trying to push you off the road, push you into difficulty, have bad things begin to come towards and the home is the same, the body is the same, our children are the same. It's a protection system that Allah has sent that be under the guidance of these awliya and their students. They've been taught, they've been stockpiling this reality. And this is a ni'mat for these days of difficulty. Then they'll teach you to wash, they'll teach you how to meditate so that you have an abundance of power. In a day when everything is depleted their energies are overflowing so that people can tap into that and begin to connect to that energy. Then their salawats, their awrads and the etiquettes that they're giving is again that protection source. So they exist. And it's a matter of people wishing to come and believe that they, they need to be protected and that they should uh, do the practices 
and the things that are required to be protected against negative energy. And unfortunately many people will experience it before they believe in it and that's the danger. They experience the horrific events of negative energy and it's better to first outfit yourself with all those protections before experiencing something and coming in and trying to get a protection. So be proactive and not reactive but the majority of people are reactive. They don't really believe until unfortunate events begin to happen in their lives. Proactive is, look nobody needs to beat me to make me to believe, I'm with you, I've got it, I'm doing it. And that becomes a proactive life in every aspect. They do their zikrs, they do their awrads, they, they do everything that been sort of guided for them and alhamdulillah that many things become blessed for them, many openings and many difficulties and many calamities have been spared from them inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, do the toxic people around us work as regulators as they are always depleting us from positive energy by throwing their negative energy? I think we started to talk about something like that. So remember the talk about crazy people? That's how we started tonight. So you can't think like that, that's like the, again the crazy thought, toxic, toxic people. The only one toxic is myself. Can't say toxic people, toxic people because Allah doesn't change a condition around me until I change myself. If I'm seeing these people as all toxic, 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 one something's wrong with me. If I begin to build myself, connect myself, build the energy, build all these things, well then these toxic people have a difficult time coming around my energy. So many times they just sort of run away. They don't want to come, they don't want to look, they don't want to… So it's a, it's, it's a different way of thinking of everything. Don't focus on the people as toxic and uh, because then we're throwing the excuse on something else and then we don't try to build ourselves. It's always looking for a crutch, oh it's somebody doing black magic on me. So we're always looking for an excuse to put on to people and that's why I'm not growing as if people are toxic, they're taking all my energy. But that's not possible. The, it's not possible that if you're sitting and meditating, put your taweez, did your wudu, built all your energy, you kept to where you're supposed to, you didn't go where you're not supposed to, then you would have an abundant flow of energy and that very bad people would be repelled by you, they, they don't want to even be around you because your energy burns them. So you'd be doing everything a correct way. And you wouldn't be taking yourself to toxic places because you're sitting, meditating, contemplating. So then you begin to restrict the places that you go and you build yourself with the energies that you have and that becomes tariq and wherever Allah sending you is on a mission, build yourself and be patient, be tolerant and don't look to people being bad but look to ourselves to build ourselves because that can go very bad very quickly because you then begin to say, well it's not me, it's them. So I'm not growing because then and then you know how shaitan will play with that, it doesn't end. The person therefore doesn't achieve anything and the excuse is why? Well it's them. So that, that's not the way the tariqah develops oneself. And that's the same way why we don't listen to complaining. Anyone wants to complain, there's not an ear that you won't because once you give an ear to complaining, the person doesn't stop. It's like uh, shaitan looking for a place to, to vomit, if, if you think you're going to listen he doesn't stop vomiting onto the person. So the, the ability to complain will never end in someone. Sadiqah is about not complaining because Allah wrote your life, there's nothing to complain about it, put it in your heart and meditate. But if you find a source in which you can complain into somebody's ears it's as if throwing all these horrible burdens and then shaitan sends even more because he thinks, oh I found an ear to dump all this garbage into. So everything has a sensitivity and a, what we call like a subtle reality. So you don't want to cross the line of that subtleness in which we just sort of complain and, and blame people, it's all the people, that's why I'm not spiritually growing which you can't be, that's not the truth. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Alaikum salam. Uh, Sayyidi, yesterday you mentioned immense heat and mouth sore when meditating. Can it also cause nosebleeds? Is it bad to get them? Yeah, heat and, and mouth sore is something different. And nosebleed can be one, either medical, a medical condition, or two, that a negative energy is trying to enter. And one of the protections of the body is then to immediately bleed. So that energy is trying to enter and the nose begins to bleed and stop the energy from entering into the nose. That's not a sign of, of spiritual growth. So the different ailments and, and different difficulties is something else. This system of heating is something else that when you heat up you feel lit, you feel like your, your, your energy is like a fire inside you and you have to regulate it and keep it cool and not go too, too deep as to burn your circuits. You have to know when to slow that energy down and how to keep the mouth from heating up. That's why it's best to have a, a cool and refreshing drink afterwards so that to bring your temperature down and to cool yourself inshaAllah. So this is just based on the energy and, and that was in reference to people saying, Well Shaykh how do we know that we got the energy? You're gonna know because you're gonna feel like you're on fire. It's not something small, you feel like your whole being and all your clothes are wet from sweat because you're bringing in a tremendous amount of energy then you're radiating that energy. So that was in reference to people asking that, how do you know? So it's not something subtle and small, you'll know when the energy is lit and your body is heating up uh, with tremendous amounts of heat, the hands are, are hot, the neck is hot, the body is sweating. So these are, these are the signs of uh, energy and, and the movement of energy within the body, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa hurmat Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha